So AI revolution in the academia is here. Whether you like it or not, it's here and it's here to stay. So what is really important is that you learn how to use AI ethically because there are just too many programs out there and frankly speaking, too many videos as well recommending all sorts of AI tools without properly considering what ethical AI use actually means. And if you're a PhD student or a researcher, you should care about research ethics and research integrity, because if you don't, then your papers will be rejected as plagiarized. Your PhD thesis might be rejected and four years of really hard work, which is go down the drain because you use AI tools inappropriately and unethically. That's why in this video, I want to focus not on recommending a particular AI tool and showing you kind of how to use it and how it can cut down your writing time and correct your mistakes. I wanna give you the principles of ethical AI use. Because if you understand these principles, then you can use any AI tool effectively and not worry about plagiarism. And the fact is that principles always beat AI. If you know the principles of literature review, if you know the principles of writing research papers, then you'll be ahead of most researchers and PhD students who are just kind of using AI tools but they don't really know what they're doing. Because at the end of the day, AI tools are just tools. They're kind of like Zotero or Mendeley, which are a referencing tool. They're like Microsoft Word, which allows you to write more easily rather than you know writing by hand or a typewriter, right? But they're just tools. So always remember that principles beat tools. So let's look at principles of ethical AI use so that you don't have to worry about plagiarism. Now, if you're new here, my name is Marek Tyszkowek and I run Academic English Now, where we help PhD students and researchers um, write and publish research papers in top Scopus index journals. So first of all, you know, AI has become so popular because it can really speed up many manual tasks. It's kind of like Imagine the days before reference managers like Zotero, Mendeley, or Endnote. You had to literally do all your referencing by hand or typing, right? You had to go to the library and take out a book, read it, write down its reference, and then format that reference typing in the correct format. That's like insane. Can you imagine doing that? Well, that's what people were doing like 20, 30 years ago, right? Now you don't have to do it because you've got Zotero or Mendeley and you just do it with one click. Pretty crazy, right? But that's the same reason why AI tools have become so popular. They can speed up your literature review and they can help you to detect language mistakes. You can ask AI questions about PDF documents to extract information faster. So, you know, as human beings, our resources are basically finite, right? We're constrained by our time and energy. So we want to use that time wisely. So if AI can speed things up for us, then great. And um, it's also, in many ways, it's going to be more accurate. Like a reference manager is always going to be more accurate in terms of formatting references than a human being. So will be AI with certain manual repetitive tasks, like, for example, correcting typical grammar mistakes. It will just be better than a human being, probably, because it's a, it's a simple repetitive task and it will be faster. Okay, um, so that's why these tools have become so popular. However, there is a lot of apprehension at universities and certain journals about whether AI tools should be used at all. And there are some universities which have completely banned the use of AI. So before you ever start using AI, especially if you're a PhD student and you're writing a thesis, you want to check your university's guidelines to see if AI use is allowed or not. Because if they have banned it, I don't think you should be risking it. It's just too dangerous. Your writing will be detect detected as AI written or helped by AI, and you'll be in big trouble. So fortunately, I think these universities are in a minority and most universities and journals do allow AI to be used, but with certain restrictions. And I wanna go through those restrictions so that you understand some of the main principles of how AI can be used. And then we're going to go over specific use cases for AI and specific 
for instance, how do you know that these restrictions work for most journals? Where I went through the biggest publishing houses like Springer, Elsevier, uh, Taylor and & Francis, and so on, and looked at their use guidelines about AI, and then distilled it to a couple important principles that will allow you to kind of um, be safe and not risk plagiarism and your thesis or papers being rejected. Now, if you're at the university, most of these little rules will still apply, but I do recommend that you check with your supervisor and your university for the exact guidelines in that specific university. So, one of the core principles is that AI should only be used to for language improvement and readability. What does that mean? Well, you can see AI basically as a proofreader or an editor, right? So as you might, you know, write a paper yourself and then send it off for proofreading, the same thing can be done by AI to an extent, of course, depending on the quality of the person proofreading your text, right? And the quality of the AI software. But it's essentially the same thing. So you're writing a text and AI checks that text for you, corrects grammar mistakes, improves the flow and so on. It does not write the text for you, and that's a crucial distinction. It just improves the text for you. So I want to show you that with an example because maybe it will become clearer. So a great software for that is called uh, Jenny AI. Um, the link to um, open your free account is in the description. Uh, if you want to go for one of the paid plans, you can use Marek20 as well um, to get a 20% off on Jenny AI plans, right? Um, so if, you, if you've written a text and you select it, right, you can go to AI commands and then, you know, for example, you can improve the text fluency, uh, you can paraphrase it, uh, you can simplify that text academically, um, right? Um, so these are some of the features that can be used because you're not generating new output, you're, you have a text that is poorly written and AI as a proofreader would helps you to improve the readability. Okay, so that's that's an important um, that's an important feature um, in here. Now, um, the second thing is that AI needs to be acknowledged. Well, what does that mean? Well, basically, in most journals where you submit the paper, you will have to tick a box or you will have to write um, that you've used AI and specify how you've used it for what parts of the paper and for what purpose and so on. So you must acknowledge, and then you. It also has to be supervised by humans. I'm going to give you more examples of this so it will become clear what I mean here. Yeah. But it's got to be supervised by you. You can't just let AI just do whatever it wants to do and then you claim that it's your output, right? Now, it's not allowed for creating figures or images. This is important. If you, if you want to, you know, sort of have some nice figures or images in your text, you cannot generate them with AI, even though there are great AI tools that would allow you to do this. And, and there are plenty of AI, beautiful AI generated images, but that can be done. Um, also, it's not permitted to draw any sort of conclusions and um, insights, like the final takeaway message and stuff like this. So you cannot use AI to interpret the data for you. You cannot use AI to do the thinking for you. And that's kind of obvious because you're the researcher, right? So you have to see the data and you have to do the thinking, right? And draw conclusions from it, uh, suggest practical implications, make suggestions for future research, you know, summarize the key insights and all those kind of things that you typically find in discussion and conclusion section. You must not use AI for that. Um, and finally, AI should not be given authorship. So there have been some papers initially when AI first kind of became really popular, where AI was listed as one of the authors. This is not allowed anymore um, because this comes links back to our, you know, our third principle really. And the first one that first of all, you cannot just take AI output. It can only be used to improve your output for readability and it must be supervised by you. So it's not really an independent author in any sense, like your colleague might be. Right. So it must not be used as as an author. So these principles are, you know, maybe a little bit high level. but They're important. Now I want to get to more sort of practical um, principles that will show you exactly kind of when to use and when not to use AI. So first um, principle is that AI or use case, let's call them use case, is brainstorming. So 
a lot of AI tools, and I'm going to be using Jenny AI as an, as an example. It has this um, assistant um, feature, right? So in here it's called AI chat, ask Jenny. And if you want to, by the way, sign up for um, Jenny AI, the link is in the, in the video. If you want to get the paid feature, you use Marek20. Uh, as a promo code, you're going to get 20% off Jenny AI, right? So basically, you can use Jenny to brainstorm ideas, to chat with it as a, as a colleague, basically. So, you know, the great thing about being in an office or in a lab is that you have got exchange of ideas. It can be terribly distracting as well at the same time, but it's great for exchanging ideas, chatting to people. When you get stuck, you can just come up to somebody and like, just say like, hey, I'm writing this thing and I just don't know how to proceed. Can you help me? And then you sit down and have a chat, right? The same thing can be done with AI in here. So you can see I've asked Jenny AI um, a question in here right? And she'll give me an, an answer, right? And the answer is pretty accurate um, because you also have a library where you can upload your text. And the more text you upload here, the better answers you're going to get because Jenny can read those PDFs and give you references um, as well for the answers that she's giving you. So it's, it's a great tool and you can just ask Jenny anything that, that you want. And this is way better than ChatGPT because it gives you references. The answers are actually much more accurate than ChatGPT would. Granted, are they always accurate? No, of course not. Like the same thing like chatting to a colleague, are they your colleague's answers always accurate? No, of course not. <laughs> she or he can make a mistake as well. Same with AI. That's why you kind of have to supervise it and verify uh, the output that AI gives you. Nevertheless, great tool for brainstorming. Now, the, the second use case um, is improving the readability of your, of your text, right? So rather than or on top of whatever you prefer, rather than hiring uh, a proofreader or an editor to, you know, give a final um, edit of your text and give you a green light that it's, it's, it's good to go. You could use AI tools to do the same thing and help you to make your text better. Again, with the example of Jenny AI, if we hop in here, I've already shown you this, but you know, you can select the text and then you can click on improve the fluency. You can get it, get Jenny to paraphrase it, simplify it, make it longer, summarize um, and so on, right? So these, these features, I think, you know, help you to just improve the overall readability of your text, which I think is great. And that's exactly what AI should be used um, for, right? Another, another use case is um, literature review. Um, so AI can do lots of cool things with, with the literature review. And I've got other videos on this channel where I dive much deeper into how to use um, AI tools for literature review. But with that said, um, let me just show you a quick example um, in here. So this tool, SciSpace, it's probably, in my opinion, the best tool out there for um, reading papers, doing the literature review. You know, um, what, it can, what it can help you with is um, getting key insights, like a summary of insight, right? So I've just typed in a, a question that it was, it was suggesting. Right? It's nothing to do with the research that I do, uh, but just as an example, you get you know one paragraph summary of basically research status on that specific question with references, which I think is amazing because again, ChatGPT is known for hallucinating and inventing references. These are accurate texts that you can actually look up and, and read um, here or go to the website and read the text um, on the website. Another cool feature is that, you know, it will give you the, um, the first 10 papers sorted by relevance or the most sort of relevant papers. You can also load more papers if you, if you scroll down, it will fetch more for you. Um, so it will, it will just load more papers as well. But the great feature is um, that you've got the key insights, results, methods used, and then you can add other columns. Like for example, what, are, what were the limitations of the, of the paper? And, you know, it will give you those limitations in bullet points, basically, which I think is just fantastic, right? Um, imagine how this speeds up your literature review. And then another great thing is that, you know, you can chat with those PDFs. So you just go to Ask Copilot and then you start asking AI questions about this paper. And especially if um, this is a PDF, so you can also upload PDFs here and um, SciSpace has access to PDFs. Mm, 
then the answers will be actually really, really good. And if you want to sign up on SciSpace, um, the link is right below. It's completely free, but if you want to start using more of its AI features, you'll have to um, pay for one of the paid plans. But I've got discount codes also in the description if you follow the link. And um, just there, there is a 40% um, discount on annual plans. So that would be the, set, the, the next use case, literature review, the third use case. Um, we also have um, use cases for data analysis. So um, AI can also help you to, for example, um, trans translate and transcribe qualitative interviews, suggest themes for your qualitative data, you know, speed up some basic statistical work, and you know, suggest kind of what the data mean and how they can be um, interpreted, right? And I can show you that with um, another tool. So SciSpace doesn't do it, but if you go to Avid Note, now, I'll put the link um, in the description as well, and um, that will give you a 10% um, discount. Um, so that will be in the, in the description, but it, Avid Note can do a lot of that analyzing for you. So for example, it's got this really cool AI transcribe feature where if you, you know, upload um, a text in here up to seven, 720 minutes, which is really long, it will just transcribe um, the text for you, which I think is great, right? Um, you don't have to use many software, you just use this one, right? So if you're doing qualitative interviews, this is awesome. It can also help you to code um, the interviews, right? Uh, so if you, if sorry, it will help you to, to create code, right? So if you're using some sort of programming language like Java or HTML, Python or whatever, and you give it instructions, Avid Node will also help you to generate code um, more easily. And this is really just the start of like all the cool things that um, Avid Note can also do, which, for example, in the other category uh, of the last category of AI uses, um, it can help you to, you know, plan a lesson if you're a, if you're a teacher, you know, if you're um, doing um, qualitative research and suggest interview questions, survey questions, right? Um, as I said, it can help you to analyze an interview that you've done or analyze uh, the data that you've got. Um, you know, it can it can also help you to you know suggest the title, suggest a journal. There's lots of like additional things that um, that this tool can do for you. Um, so I hope that this video helps you to understand the principles of using AI and the main use cases. So if you just got one thing out of this video, remember that principles always beat AI. And AI is just a tool. Can it speed up your work? For sure. Can it make your text more accurate? For sure. But can it or should it be to generate articles or essays or theses for you? No, because that's cheating, right? That's just not ethical. So that's something really important. So treat it as a brainstorming conversation colleague to whom you can chat and ask questions about your work. You can speed up the literature review, read text faster, right? Extract the main information faster. You can also improve the readability of your text, right? Improve the fluency, the language, but please do not generate text yourself. Now, if you want to work with us, human beings, we haven't replaced ourselves with AI yet, we're working on it, um, then book a free one-to-one -one consultation. We're going to get on a one-to-one -one call um, with you, discuss what your challenges are, what your goals are, and then devise a plan for you uh, that will best help you to achieve those goals faster. And the link to that free one-to-one -one consultation is right below this video.